ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಬರಿತಾರೆ now i request uh, the, our first uh, today like there are two day symposium on the first day we have presentation from the brazilian partner on the second day we have presentation from the indian partners and some oral presentation from the brazilian partners also and the first uh, in the program uh, the first 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 talk is from professor alexandro pedro ayala and topic is controlling stereochemistry by crystal engineering so i request professor ayala please share the screen with here yeah, with us share the screen and start your presentation okay are you okay thank you hi it's okay are you listening to me yeah 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 okay wonderful okay okay good morning good afternoon again to everyone uh, now we are moving to the scientific part of the meeting uh i would like to start speaking a little bit about what what we have been doing in in fortaleza eh, or in brazil in this area eh, but since eh, my talk is the first of the, the first of the meeting i will use uh, some slides just to to give a very 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 short introduction to the field So why studying solid state properties of pharmaceutical and uh, the main problem or, or the, the 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 issue come with the farm with the drugs is they have to reach the place where they will they will act so and briefly we have two ways to reach this place one way is by injection uh, which no one likes to to get an injection but it's a, a quite efficient way because because the drugs is put in in a solution and the solution go through the through injection go directly to the blood and from the blood it can reach easily the place the place where it will act it's an efficient way but it's not a uh, no one likes and i not it not is not a practical way because we cannot distribute a lot of medicine like that because um we need some kind of infrastructure people trying it to apply injection so in that case the 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 preferred way to for the pharmaceutical industry i even for us is to use pills or tablets or something like that which is a solid and oral formulation uh but uh, differently to the injection where we have just a solution of the drugs in the pill there is a lot of technology involved we start with with the molecule we have to transform the molecule in crystal the crystalline particle and we have to press all these particles in the, in the in the solids in some solid form uh this solid form we will will go to the digestive system in the digestive system we need to to have some dissolution process just to release this the the active ingredient the active ingredient have to go through the the from the digestive system to the blood and from the blood it will reach it will reach the the place of action so you got you can see that there is a lot of stage involved in a very in the very easy or is something that looked very easy like to take a pill but there are a lot of technological uh, challenges challenges in that in this process and most of them are related to to the to the solid form the 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 form of the drug in some kind of solid and between the solid forms the crystalline form is preferred by the industry because uh, it is more stable it it can it is it guarant some purity and it can be solid form can be uh, there there we have some accuracy and reproducibility to reproduce these uh, forms 
uh, there are some intellectual intellectual property issues involved, so it, solid form can be protected. And the main pro the main the main problem of the solid form is the solid form they can affect the physical physical and chemical properties. So they can be used as a as a tool to improve, but they they also have some some we can have we can have some drawbacks. So solid forms depend uh, affect or determine the melting point, the electron property, solubility, density, and the pharmacy. Um, in that way, it also affects some physical some physical chemical of pharmaceutical properties like the stability, the solution rate, bioavailability, and usually solubility and the and bioavailability are the main uh, focus on the study of the solid form. Regarding to solid form very quickly, we, we have several ways, usually you can see we, have, we talk about polymer, solvates, salt, co-crystal, but on the view of my talk, I will have to introduce not only the, the, the well the, the forms with a well-defined stoichiometry, but also forms we have some continuous change in the geometry, stoichiometry, like the, the um, solid solution, where we have, we have different rates of the two molecules. We have several multi-component forms, which are very, uh, we are on the focus on the research nowadays. Uh, and most of them are well, are stoichiometric, but solid solid solution can be can be continuous in principle. We can also have eutectics or dispersions, or which are basically amorphous forms. But I will not focus on that. I will just talk about um, crystalline forms. So what is in the, in the last? 10 years more or less become very popular is, is the study of crystal. Due to that, the main, the main um, regulation agencies define rules to uh, classify and to register co crystal. E, the rules change a little bit from agency to agency from the, U, U, well, the, the United States, from the European, from the Brazilian. But more or less, all of them agree that they, we have a, a co-crystal. It's a multi-component system where uh, there are the, the, the two, the, the different components are linked by, by weak interactions. And uh, those weak interactions are, um, uh, are the main point of being disco crystal, usually they are classified as different from salt, even though the difference is not uh, very well defined. Uh, the main point in defining disco crystal is, um, it, which is the, the main tool of the crystal engineering area, is what we call the synton. The synton is the structural unit with define the supramolecular structure. That is, is the unit with based on what the molecular the molecules are connected. There are several ways uh, we can use this design our crystal based on on the symptoms. Uh, as I told, the viability used to be the main the main topic to be addressed because with co crystal we can improve the solution rates. We can improve. Uh, in some case, permeability. The yellow line is the raw material, the main, the, we said the pure component. The other color lines are, are different co-crystals. So you can improve uh, dissolution rates. In some case, we can improve permeability. And of course, the main, the, the goal is to improve the pharmaco pharmacokinetic. And you can see you can even reach very, very high uh, bioavailability using, using co-crystal. Of course, of course, uh, viability or solubility is not the only 
the only property which we will target. But uh, I will not focus on the other properties in, in this talk, but you can see there are the schemical, the stability, for the stability, agrophotochemicity, mechanical properties. So there is a large number of um, application of crystal engineering on, on the pharmaceutical, on the pharmaceutical art. Uh, so going that, going to, to the topic of my, of my talk, ah, sorry. And this, this approach has been very successful. Uh, we have been several, several co-crystal, which even though they were not define it as a co-crystal at the beginning, but which are in the market since a long time. But recently, several new medicine which were designed as a co-crystal uh, went to the market. This is in the, in, the, in the bottom line, and several other um, are coming are coming are, are coming out. Uh, if you if you see if you check which is the the profit of this of this of this new medicine, you can see that cocrystal are doing very well on the market. So it is a real approach. Uh, the pharmaceutical industry understand it very well. They have it has a lot of advantage, even from the point of view of properties, intellectual property. Uh, repurposing rocks, which which is really very important in the actual situation of the uh, of the pandemic, and due to that, it's a it's a very important area, and you can see that um, the number of participants we have now in this meeting, in a, even considering the the situation of the world, the time difference between our one country is a good reference of how important the, the field is. But okay, let's, let's talk about the, the topic of my talk. I will start talking about controlling the stoichiometry by solid solution. The idea of the solid solution of a mixer or a mixed crystal is to have two molecules in a crystalline structure. So we, I will not talking about a um, eutectic mixture. We are talking about, about crystal. So to have two molecules in a crystal with a not defined stoichiometry is a challenge because uh, molecules is not easy to change one molecule for the other. It is something which is very easy in, in the inorganic field because we are basically changing a sphere by a sphere. But here with the molecule have some conformation, some geometry. And it's not easy to, to, to put two molecules randomly in a place. But so we have some requirements for that. The molecule must be similar. The, the, the crystal structure must be also similar. We are expecting that will be isomorphic structure. And in that case, we can, we can, we will uh, just distribute two molecules um, randomly in the structure. Uh, and all the structure be, will be also is more. There are several examples in the literature about that. And you can see that the, the, the molecules are similar. They are randomly distributed. But uh, regarding to our work, shall we have two more, we need two, two molecules, which will squash it in a, in, a, in, a, in a new crystal. We expect a solubility. Now, no, I am not talking about the, 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 the acute solubility, but in the yeah, solid solubility. And we are, this substance must be one solubility in the other. Maybe if we are, it could be in the wall range or just partial range of concentration. And this change in the, in the, in the, in the relative concentration will will help us to change properties and changing properties which will be interesting for pharmaceutical. The molecules we will use are two antiviral molecules, lamivudine and citrabine. 
Uh, both are used in the treatment of the HIV um, infections. And they are extremely similar molecules. The only difference is a fluorine cation here, and a atom here. Uh, and both have similar activity, but different pharmacokinetic. It will be also interesting due to that to have a combined, a combined um, so, uh, formulation. So from the point of view of structure, there are several polymorphs of FTC, polymorph of 3TC, hydrates, hydrates, salt, crystals, but um, at the moment of the sun or try to for absolute solution, we are expecting some is kind of isomorphism the, between the two molecules. So if we compare some two structure of both of them and overlap them, you can see that even if they don't have the same crystalline structure, they share the same packing. And it could be a uh, a signature that the we could get a solid solution. So due to that, we, we tried so to produce the solid solution by a slow evaporation. But we, get, we got two concentration for that, where, where we, which were uh, confirmed by HPLC. It was with uh, 56 and 43% of FTC on 3TC. But the surprising thing is when we compare the power pattern of the new or the solid solution, which are clear, clearly is a structural, when we compare with the raw material, they are completely different, and which is surprising. And, but if we, if we, when we determine the critical structure, uh, we saw that the solid solution is not based on the on the um, on the pure raw material, but in a, in a monohydrate of 3TC. There is a solid monohydrate which is here. You can see that the solid solution. This is the experimental and the calculated power pattern. The, the, the calculator reproduces very well the experimental one, and the experimental one is. Uh, isomorphous with the with the pure uh, monohydrate. You can see here, uh, even if the is isomorphous, there are some change in the power pattern due to the presence of the fluorine, fluorine molecule. And one interesting thing of this um, of this uh, structure uh, is it has five different uh, non-equivalent uh, molecules. And those molecules are organized by using hydrogen, different hydrogen bonds, but um, no fluorine, fluorine, or fluorine, uh, fluorine hydrogen bond, uh, um, halide bonds are observed. The, the symmetric unit is five molecules of 3 tp plus one molecule of water. And um, so uh, by slow evaporation, we got two different structures. And um, when we go to properties, one easy and uh, very common property to test on this kind of problem is the, is this, is the melting point. We have here the melting point of the raw material. Here we have the melting point of our solid solution, which that structures I, I, I want to reinforce were determined by single crystal X ray diffraction. And the stoichiometry determined by a single crystal agrees very well with the HA policy um, um, uh, calculation. And the power pattern calculated from the from the crystal structure, the solid crystal structure agrees very well with the experimental one. So you can see that we can, we can uh, see that this is quite uh, robust the, the structure, the the, pro the production of this solid solution. And as uh, you can see here, the 
the multi the DSC curves are very different from the raw materials. They are, there is a far something like looks like a, a, a melting, followed with the, for the, a second melt. And so we are expecting a melting followed for a recrystallization. And it's something we can see through the thermal microscopy, it melts after that recrystallize and finally, finally melts again. But the point is, the main question is, is at the beginning of our talk is, was can we change properties using solid solution? Okay, we can try this um, the melting point. And you can see that in adding FTC, we, we have a kind of quite line, linear reduction of the melting point. It's, uh, it's okay. Uh, it was uh, very interesting, but slow evaporation has a, a problem. Even if we are, we are producing quite uh, well and it's quite consistent, the production, uh, during the slow evaporation uh, process, you don't have full control of the final stoichiometry because uh, it will be finally determined by the stoichiometry. And we cannot guarantee that if we change the concentration, we, we will not have some residue of the, of the, um, of the raw material. So we want to, to, to have more control about the, the, the stoichiometry of the product. For that, we decide to do mechanical activation. In that case, if and then if, it, if we don't have a residue peaks on the on the power packet then uh, uh, from the raw materials, we can we can be sure that 100% was converted to the to the solid solution. So here we have the um, different solid solution produced by 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 writing, um, uh, by uh, solving assisted writing, uh, starting with, with uh, the pure monohydrate and increasing the concentration of FTC. Uh, we are showing here up to the last uh, concentration where we are not seeing the FTC, some FTC residue. You can, you can see that we have this peak of the FTC is a very good fingerprint, a marker or, or having an excess of the, or not reacted uh, FTC sample. So we can see, if you, you can see that they are all is structural, but also, but the, even if they are is structural, there are little changes which are expected because we are including chlorine in the structure. We are changing an hydrogen by, the, by a fluorine, which is a huge change in the number of, of electrons. If we want to the DSC, now we, we can split. The, this is the, 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 the DSC of the, of the solvate, pure solvate, there, there is this melting following for a recrystallization and the final melt. And we can see that here we are turning this process. And, and then uh, we, we check the, so the melting point again. You, have, you can see that the, this linear behavior we saw in the single, in the, in the slower, slower operation, it is, it is uh, preserved with the, with the mechanical activation. But if you see here the 50% sample, it has the same melting point uh, of the 60%. It is uh, quite interesting because uh, it suggests that uh, in fact, 50% it was not a pure um, solid solution. Probably we have some residue of FTC, but this is a small amount which is not detected in the in the um, in the power pattern so in that case we can see, we can um, observe that we can um, 
get, propose that the solubility limit of FTC in, in the monohydrate 3TC uh, structure is something around uh, between 50, 60 and 50 percent. This was the work of Francesca Fonseca. We will speak later about other other topic, but it was a collaboration with with the Professor Javier Elena, who will talk after me after me and and the some people from Monte, the from Monte, from Uruguay. The other the other way to control um, control stoichiometry is by crystal design. So we will try to use, uh, to design now a crystal structure where we can define the relationship in between the co-former and the, the with uh, our APA. Uh, we, for that, we use benzoyl metronidazole as a, as, as a target drug. And uh, we have, in, in a crystal engineering uh, project, we have to start by defining uh, our strategy. And uh, looking to the CSD, we can see that we can use, in principle, that this nitrogen uh, to, from the middle group to do some hydrogen bonds. Uh, we will propose as a co-former thing that have um, a carboxylic or phenol as a co-former. So we, we did a, a long, several tests with that. We tried with against a, a, a large um, um, screen with a uh, database or by library of co-former and we will I will show you just those where we got um, uh, crystals and we got the crystal structure determined which were we, which are 13 structure we report uh, in, in this work so uh, how to organize those things okay I will start first with the easy the simple way that which, is, which are a structure that has just one uh, OH group. If we, if we check this structure with, one, with just one OH, OH group, we can say, okay, uh, for sure we will have an one one stoichiometry. Uh, this uh, stoichiometry um will follow is following the expected uh, symptom we have the the carbon the the, um, the carboxylic group linked to the midazole group we have the the phenol group linked by ad hydrogen bond to the um, midazole group and there are there are even there are there are um, even so the 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 symptoms is always the same. We have different packings of this one one structures. Even even besides uh, those packings, we also had some the, let's say let's just the those one one structure. We also have a uh, one solvate. In fact, it was a channel solvate, uh, but but even being a solvate, uh, it follow the the same the designed symptoms. Um, in principle, um, we have not surprise. Okay, let's say we. Is something you can find a lot of in the literature. We can have several to produce multi-component forms uh, of um, APA, a conformer, uh, using uh, some predefined uh, symptom expression. 
But since it works, we the next step will be okay. Let's try to do a two to one stoichiometry. So we will use molecules with two of the of our symptoms. So we choose molecules which uh, two OH groups. Okay, and for our surprise, some of them they were not able to produce a two to one. Uh, stoichiometry, but again, one-to-one. -one. Okay. Uh, we have this one-to-one -one stoichiometry, but, but let's try to see why we don't have, we didn't have a two-to-one, an expected two-to-one. Okay, in two of the structures, this, the first two, we can see that the, the OH, one of the carbonyl group of one of the OH is very close to the second one. So in those cases, we, we have a, a very strong intramolecular um, hydrogen bond. And this hydrogen bond hinders, this intramolecular uh, hydrogen bond, hinder the, 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 the full, the, the, oh, the conformer, to be able to use this one, this second OH to, to do a second uh, hydrogen bond with the, with the API. And other, other, other case, which is, let's say, I would say it could be expected in carboxylic group, is to have a dimer of the conformer conformer dimer, which is also quite frank. Uh, and these two cases will will not allow the conformer to have a, an to produce two one two to one second. So knowing that we decide to to choose molecules where the OH groups are as far away as possible, just to avoid these kind of things. But um, unfortunately, it's not uh, valid to predict if we have we will have this, this uh, structure or not. Of course, checking the CSD, we can see if one performers um, uh, used to to do things like that. But in principle, uh, this kind of of um, this kind of structure will be defined by, by serendipity. Right? Okay, but let's, let's use the approach to, to spread the OH. And with that, we choose molecules with the, where the OH are a little bit uh, distant, and we cannot have um, a intramolecular bonds. And in, the, in those cases, we were, we were able to produce, oh, sorry, uh, we were able to produce, oh, oh, let me go back. We were able to produce two to one um, structure, two to one structure. Uh, notice that in the first one with uh, the each OH is linked to a different uh, API uh, molecules, this, this one uh, are different um, and no, non-equivalent. But in the, in, the, in the second or third case, the conformer has, uh, can be or arranged uh, with an inversion or a symmetry plane uh, in the middle. So in fact, we have half, conform half conformer in the in the symmetric unit, the second one is generated by symmetry, but due to that, the two molecules on the um, asymmetric unit, uh, the two molecules of the two to one uh, stoichiometry are in this case are equivalent. Okay, notice that there is a quite consistent uh, Christian packing on all of them. Which use uh, some pi pi and ch pi 
uh, bonds, but I will not talk about uh, uh, more detail uh, about the, the crystal packing. If you are interested, you can go to our to our publication. So, with the two to one, um, with the molecules, with, with the cofarma, we do hydrogen. We do two OH groups. We were able to to produce the expected two to one, but we have to be careful about how to choose the coformate because we can it, it can go back to the one to one uh, structure. So we are, we were very very enthusiastic with that. Um, so we we did say okay. We did one one, we did two to one, maybe we will be able to do three to one. So we choose a molecule with three OH group. Uh, but if you, if you look here, we again have the same problem. The OH are very close to the, to the, um, are very close to the carbonyl group and they produce a, a strong intramolecular group, so we end up having just one available. And in that case, we have um, again a uh, one to one stereotype. So apparently, uh, the three to one is not working, but if we follow the designing rule, designing rule. We propose with the two to one that, that is uh, take the IROH, the OH far away from between them. We can at the end produce a three to one stoichiometry because intramolecular hydrogen bonds are not allowed in this one. And we have the three hydrogen bonds, the three OH being linked to the to three non-equivalent um, uh, API, API uh, um, molecules. So we were able to produce one to one, two to one, three to one, but we have to define a um, crystal engineering strategy just to go to the higher order uh, stoichiometry. Uh, if you if you notice, I, I in any moment I talk about co-crystals or salts. Uh, in fact, the definition between co-crystal co co and salts uh, could be even difficult. There are some cases where they are well defined. Are uh, things which is called the salt co-crystal continuum. And um, in fact, if we analyze our structure, compare it with the whole CSC database, we can comp we compare it some different parameter from the our Sinton Sinton strategy. In the case of, for example, in the case of the phenol groups, we compare the distance between the for phenol, the carb, the the imidas group and the phenol, compare the database. Our our structure are more or less in the in the expected behavior. The same the CO distance again. They are, they are agree with the um, with a protonated uh, CO uh, moiety. And if we compare one way to, to check if the carbonyl group is a salt or not, let's say if it is protonate or not, is to compare the two CO distance. If, if they are both the same or approximately the same, it means the hydrogen is not in one of the oxygen. So it, it means it will be a salt. If they are approximately the same, it means it will be uh, eco crystal so you can see that most of our in our structure the co distance are quite different so most of the cases we have a uh, co crystals and in some in one case we have we got a salt 
And in one case, we, have, we got something which is in the middle between a salt and a co-crystal, and it was verified by finding the, the hydrogen uh, between the position in the hydrogen between the two, the two molecules, the two. <clears throat> uh, stoichiometry, stoichiometry was able to, to tune uh, melting points. It was also able to tune um, to change solubility. But I will not talk about uh, more about those things uh, in this talk. This is, was a work from a uh, former PhD student, now a professor from uh, a professor Yara Santiago, in collaboration with Wendell Sarabe, who will talk later a little bit about polymorphism on those systems. So with that, I will finish. My, my talk. Uh, I, I would like to, to, sign, to thank especially my research group and the people uh, who participate of those, uh, of those uh, 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 scientific results. And there are several funding agencies which uh, support us. There is also, uh, of course, the, the University of Langnau, which the, this long-term collaboration, the uh, Institute of Physics of San Carlo, from Professor Javier Elena, who we talked about after me. And, and we have been working on those things, things along that. So please, with that, I will thank you, uh, everywhere, every one of you, very much about for listening to my talk. And please stay at home, be careful. Uh, soon we will we will be able to to be uh, to meet in person all too well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Alejandro. Now we maybe we invite some questions. If you have some questions, you can drop in the text message. Anyone has any questions regarding the talk of Professor Alejandro? They are all giving you thanks. Yes, I have one. Venu has one question. Okay. Maybe I mm -hmm. can unmute Venu. One minute. Okay. Mm -hmm. One minute. Uh, yes, Venu, we have unmuted you. Uh, Thank you, Professor uh, Alessandro Ayala. As yeah. usual, uh, it is a very interesting talk. Mm -hmm. Myself, Venu Vangala, a lecturer from the University of Bradford, UK. Uh, I, uh, my question is about uh, m 3 cetabin and lamivudine uh, solid solutions. Uh, that is quite a, an interesting result. Earlier, some time ago, we have also worked uh, actually with the solid solutions, uh, but uh, those molecules were uh, uh, organic molecules and uh, do not have uh, pharmaceutical relevance. And we know that fluorohydrogen exchange and uh, halogen exchanges and chloromethyl exchanges, these do happen in the, I mean, from the literature. What I'm trying to ask you is uh, how common are, uh, how generally is uh, between the pharmaceutical compounds to have disclosed molecular structures and to prepare solid solutions out of them and have some impact on the pharmaceutical properties of them. Okay, thank you very much uh, for the question. And Venu, it's very nice to see you here uh, in, our, in our meeting, it's a big pleasure. Uh, okay, um, the main point <clears throat> With solid solution is to have close close structure, and this is something that uh, you will not see so frequently, and it's not completely uncommon in the pharmaceutical. Let's say to have com close structure is is not completely uncommon in the pharmaceutical area because um, it's a usual strategy from the pharmaceutical industry to do small changes in the 
in well known um, in well known uh, uh, APIs just to improve or to change properties. So I will say um, probably you will not uh, you will not find that much on the market. But if you go to the molecules and development, or uh, which were in development, you will find a lot of molecules with similar activity, and were which were selected by one against the, against the other just due to probably physical chemical properties. But in that case, we can you you can recover these all molecules just to try to use combination of them just to tune properties like when we press here. In that case, the two molecules are being used, in fact, but you can see that the, the main difference with that, then you have different pharmacokinetic. One of them was, was leave, left in the, in during the development process. You can you recover, because they are basically the same, you can recover it just to uh, go through the to improve properties. So um, I think uh, you have more open opportunities to to do solid solution that uh, which apparently you have. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in terms of properties, just a small follow up question. So. I leave the floor for other questions if there are any. Uh, what are the uh, pharmaceutical uh, changes we are seeing because of solid solution in this case? Okay, in this case, we, we won't go too much through the properties, especially because bone molecules are, are quite, quite soluble. The idea, the idea was to, to, let's say, from the point of view of uh, improving pharmaceutical properties, um, uh, the, these molecules were not, uh, let's say, a big challenge because they are they have a good viability and they have a, a good solubility. But they have different pharmacokinetics. So the idea was to have a combined uh, formulation to improve pharmacokinetics not to go through the usual or um, to the usual solid state properties of the uh, formulations. Yeah, okay. I understand. Yeah, thank you very much, Professor uh, uh, Congratulations for the talk and both Professor Poonam and you for this thank excellent much. conference. Thank you. Thank you very much, Venu, for uh, being with us. And uh, thank you very much, Professor Alessandro, for a very nice talk and uh, 